Hello there, and thank you so very much for joining me, your host, Joseph Massey, today for this rather intriguing Symbidium tutorial on how to make rather delicious centerpieces using, yes, you guessed it, Symbidium orchids. Now, centerpieces are one of my favorite things to design, and Symbidium is my favorite flower, so you can imagine how excited I am to share these tutorials with you today. I've got three distinct designs to share with you. Some of them very, very simple, that literally anybody could have a go at, and some a little bit more technical and a little bit more out there. I I hope you enjoy each and every design though and I'm sure there's plenty to learn from each of our three combinations that I'm going to be sharing with you today. Without further ado, shall we begin? First up, we're going to dive into the simplest Cymbidium centerpiece. Now, this is truly a design that anybody can have a go at. We're going to be using three stems of beautiful Cymbidium orchid. We have a gorgeous golden hue, a copper hue, and a beautiful true yellow as well. And we're going to combine these with some incredible autumnal ingredients, including some amaranthus, some red hot poker, some dill, some eustoma or lysianthus, crespedia, and some autumn grasses too. Now that we've covered our flowers, let's take a look at the sundries and tools we'll be using. Today, I'm going to be using a selection of gorgeous bottles. That's right, nothing too fancy here. Just really simple bottles that you can collect from, you know, from your own kitchen even, or if you need quite a few from that of your friends' kitchens as well. Now I've got a couple of different sizes here. We have some smaller, we have some larger, and some medium sizes too. What matters is that all of the vases have a harmony together. So when you bring them together within the combination, they will all work incredibly well. That's very much what we want to happen. Here I've displayed them quite eclectically on the table. We've got our larger vases towards the center, some of our smaller vases towards the outside, and that's what matters, a gorgeous combination through which we can arrange our florals. I'll fill them with water, and now it's time for us to begin arranging our cymbidium. As you can see here, we have an incredibly gorgeous yellow cymbidium. Now, cymbidium in this style of centerpiece, you can really get an excellent amount of bang for your book from them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a pair of snips, and I'm just going to go into the stem of cymbidium and trim it in half. And immediately, I have two individual stems that I can work with instead of the one. Now, this is the great thing about cymbidium. Obviously, you get so many heads on a single stem. And in this style of design, it means we can really get massive maximum bang for our book by using this particular flower. I'm going to trim off a few of the lower heads, but don't bin them. Don't throw them aside. We're going to use them later on within this composition too. I'm using a sharp knife, but you can use a pair of scissors or secateurs as you need to. And I'm going to take each and every stem of the cymbidium and work them directly through and simply place them into the clear glass bottles that you see here. Now, this is an incredibly simple technique. There's nothing too crazy about this, nothing too dangerous about it. There's nothing too wild about it. It's simply placing flowers in very simple, clear vases. However, I bet you'll be surprised about what we can manage to create together. As you can see here, I'm taking each of these beautiful cymbidium heads and just placing them each into individual vases. Now, this is a, such a incredibly versatile design. You can mix and match it for any size table and for any amount of flower that you're using. Of course, using cymbidium goes a very long way. One stem enables you to fill several vases, which you can't really say that for many flowers indeed. But this is very, very true of this particular design and it really helps fill up the design rather quickly as you can see here. With our cymbidium in position, we can now embellish them, work around them, and we're going to start off with some gorgeous dill flower, which in late summer and autumn is a beautiful umbel-shaped bloom to be able to use in compositions. Now, we don't need too many of these at all. I'm going to use just a handful of them, maybe three, five stems, nothing too crazy. I'm going to keep them quite low within the design too, taking each stem at a time, removing any foliage from the stems, and then trimming it on a 45 degree angle using a sharp knife or a pair of floristry snips, placing each stem directly into the vases. I'm going to continue now by adding in some incredible Eustoma. This beautiful yellow Alyssa variety will just work so beautifully to bounce off the gorgeous golden hues of the Cymbidium. Now, as we're working the flowers into this composition, you'll note that I'm really letting the Cymbidium be the key focal flower here. The Cymbidium will last the longest in this composition, so we're really making sure that they stand out. You'll note as well that all the flowers are being kept at pretty much the same level. We don't have too much at the minute going very high or very tall. We're creating a gorgeous full carpet of texture and color across these vessels. Nothing too crazy, 
at the minute. Now for something a little bit more out there. Here we have some Nipponia, some red hot poker. And what I'm going to do with... What I'm going to do with these stems might seem absolutely crazy. I'm going to take one stem, but I'm going to keep it quite long. And what I'm going to do with these stems is what I'm going to place them directly into the vases and keeping those stems really, really long, creating a visual tension between the taller blooms and the shorter blooms within the composition. Just three stems of these red hot pokers really elevates the design, helps bring the characteristics out taller and really changes the whole perspective. We're going to add to this feeling by using these locally grown, very, very gorgeous autumnal grasses. And again, taking all of the lower foliage off, trimming them at an angle and placing only a handful of stems through. We have a visual weight at the base of this design. And what we're doing now is just elevating and bringing the eye up, really creating quite an unusual centerpiece. Moving on now to using some gorgeous coral fountain amaranthus and I'm just going to take off every leaf and any little side shoots so we have some gorgeous clean clear stems from which to work with. The whole point of this centerpiece, this incredibly simple centerpiece, is to create tension and contrast between our materials. We have the fabulous Cymbidium orchid giving us luxury and giving us colour, drawing the eye in boldly towards the centre and then we're going to be using some lighter taller materials to fill space and add volume and really create some contrast between these two elements. With our Amaranthus in position, we're now going to be using some incredibly beautiful Craspedia. Now, Craspedia is such a good, long-lasting floral material, it will hold up very well next to the Cymbidium orchids and, of course, complement them colour-wise too. We're taking one stem at a time, trimming the base of it on a 45-degree angle, again using snips or a sharp knife, and then placing them directly into the vases as you see here. We're really creating some dynamite material here. We're looking at these materials all combining together to see a gorgeous contrast between what we have at the bottom and what we have at the top. Adding in one final orchid now to complete the combination. Now, we have our gorgeous composition here, filling up the space, filling up the table, creating a gorgeous, intriguing style centerpiece with difference and texture and contrast. However, we can add another layer to this now. Remember those Cymbidium orchid heads that we used right at the start that maybe we didn't have a use for at the time? I now want you to gather them up and just cluster several of these heads towards the very base of this centerpiece. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take around four or five heads and just position them gorgeously into the composition. What this will do is really allow us to bring the colour down to the table so we have these different levels right we have the texture and this color of the cymbidium on the actual table itself and then we have all of the blooms situated within the vases and then we have the taller blooms that are shooting up as well we're just going to finish this with a small selection of tea light votives adding a little bit more atmosphere into our composition how cool and contemporary does this look the cymbidium doing the heavy lifting accented with just a few delicious floral materials now, the great thing about this composition is, of course, its versatility. If we don't have a round table, we can design this on a long table. Maybe we don't have a gorgeous petite table for two. Instead, we have a gorgeous longer table for a family to gather around. And you're right, this design is entirely flexible. So we can use the same vessels, the same flowers, exactly the same compositions as we created earlier and simply adapt them to fill a gorgeous space down a longer table. That really is the strength of this style of incredibly simple centerpiece. Not only does it welcome everybody so that everybody can have a go at it, it also can be adapted and mixed up and styled down depending on how you wish to present it to your friends or your family or your clients, whoever you are designing for. I happen to think as well, they also look incredibly cute, scaled down. Just a few of these gorgeous vases filled with cymbidium can look beautiful on a gorgeous poser table for any event. With our simplest centerpiece box tick, let's move on to our stylish Cymbidium centerpiece. Now in this composition, we're going to be moving colours to pink and we're going to be using some gorgeous dahlia, as you can see here, some beautiful pink O'Hara garden roses and some hydrangea, combined, of course, with a few other gorgeous materials. We're going to be using some sweet pea, some echinacea, some beautiful gerbera and a little bit of clematis too. Not forgetting a gorgeous combination of beautiful pink Cymbidium. We have some gorgeous 
those deep pinks, some lighter pinks, and some honey, soft blush, some medium to combine all together within this composition. For the materials we're gonna be needing for this centerpiece, really simple. We're gonna use a selection of gorgeous footed bowls, and we're gonna combine that with a simple pin holder and a little bit of tack or fix to hold our pin holder in position. Now, if you haven't worked with pin holders before, you are in for a treat, sometimes called Kenzan, which is Japanese for sword mountain, apparently. These fantastic contemporary little tools are a great way to display a limited amount of floral material in a very contemporary fashion. What I want you to do is take a length of a tack or fix and around about 15 centimeters or so and break that down into three individual pieces around about five centimeters in length each. I then want you to take each piece one at a time and roll it into a sweet little ball. You can do this three times and then space them equidistantly on the base of the Kenzan. Once we have these three individual pieces of tack in position, we then take our bowl and very gently we press our Kenzan or our pin holder directly into the center of our bowl just like so. And this will be the mechanic which we'll be using in our stylish centerpiece today. Now, to begin, look at this gorgeous blush honey tone symbolium. I say honey tone because it's not, it's not a true pink. This is, it has a, a very gorgeous peachy golden hue to it, and I simply just couldn't resist. What we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to take our symbolium, and again, we're going to get maximum bang for our book from it by trimming the stem in half using a good pair of floristry snips. We may even be able to get multiple stems from this stem by trimming it again, giving us three individual individual stems of cymbidium from just one stem of cymbidium, truly making it go as far as it possibly can. Now, when we take our cymbidium, what we're going to be doing in this composition is grouping our materials together. I want to create key groupings within our design. So we're going to be actually taking different varieties of pink cymbidium, grouping them together, and then placing them directly into the centerpiece. Every single stem that we're going to be using, we're going to be directly placing down onto the Kenzan, keeping it firmly in position. And that's the great thing about working with Kenzan. It means we can really create fabulous arrangements, very stylish compositions, without the need of a ton of foliage or a ton of additional flower in to hide our mechanics. It really means that we let the flowers speak in a very contemporary fashion. With our first variety of cymbidium in the bowl, I'm now gonna take another variety, a separate stem of cymbidium, this one even pinker. Now this is a miniature cymbidium, which is perfect to provide us with a textural contrast, and alongside a textural contrast, a contrast in size as well, drawing the eye closer in as the blooms are more densely packed. Now what I'm gonna do again is cluster these cymbidium together, grouping like with like, and separating out my bowl into three distinct areas, using three different style three different varieties of cymbidium within the same composition. Now what I'm creating is essentially a low gorgeous centerpiece which is going to be filled with cymbidium and then highlighted with just a few additional flowers too. Now here our bowl is really starting to fill out. I'm going to repeat the process by taking another few stems of these miniature cymbidiums and adding them directly into the composition. Now for a little bit of spice, I'm going to go for this fantastic, incredibly deep pink, almost ready brown cymbidium and combine it with the other lighter pink cymbidiums to create a gorgeous contrast. Again, I'm going to keep my flowers grouped. So I'm going to use like cymbidium with like cymbidium. So we see at the front we have a gorgeous selection of those honey-toned pink cymbidium. Going off to the right we have those miniature pink cymbidium and I'm going to create two little clusters of these fantastic browny, pinky, blushy, deep blush colored cymbidium through the composition as well. Now this is really interesting because what it does is it allows us to create a fantastic base of our composition using only cymbidium. Now it's time to add in a different bloom and here we have a quite fantastical, I mean quite incredible really, Dahlia, which is going to combine into our cymbidium bowl absolutely fabulously. Now what I will say with this stylish contemporary design, we want to pick materials that are going to be able to hold their own against the cymbidium. Cymbidium is such a powerful flower, especially when used on mass, like we're using it in this composition. So when we're adding our material in, we're going to add in quite graphic materials, quite bold flowers, which can stand up to the cymbidium, which can hold their own against 
interested. I'm now going to add in a smaller ball shaped dahlia, deeper in hue, this one a little bit more purpley, and I'm gonna have this going taller. Now, as we saw in our first incredibly simple cymbidium centerpiece, we're not afraid of going tall with our centerpieces as long as they are, as long as they allow people to see across the table, they don't take up too much space and block the view. I'm gonna add in a few other flowers now. We see we've got a gerbera in there. Now we're gonna add in a stem of gorgeous pink clematis just to pull everything together. Now let's take a look at one of these signature gorgeous stylish arrangements placed together. You see how contemporary they are, really letting the cymbidium do the talking, highlighted with other bold material in there. We have our key focus flowers really talking, the you new know, holding the piece together and highlighted with the more delicate elements like the echinacea and of course the gorgeous beautiful dahlia too. Now when all these pieces come together they are of course 360 degrees when we need Need centerpieces to be seen from all angles, people sitting on every side of the table. And with all of the different variations I'm going to create of this design, we're doing the same thing, repeating the same process. I've created these combinations in five different bowls and then placed them along our central table, as you can see here. I think this looks truly fabulous. The Cymbidium are really doing the shouting in this design and the colour blocking of them really helps pull everything together and they hold their own and providing a fabulous, gorgeous contrast to some of the other key floral material we have in here. The Cymbidium, we've grooved, we've colour blocked them, we've brought them through together and we've taken that theory and placed it all the way along the rest of the table, highlighting it with some other gorgeous choice materials such as the sweet pea, the roses, the dahlia, to really pull everything together to create the most delectable of centrepieces. Now the great thing about this centrepiece is of course if you don't have a long table to decorate like I have here, well, you guessed it, we can use just one of these designs on a single table as you see here. Just one of these compositions could do the job. Maybe you've got a table of uh, friends coming around, you know, five or six of them, one of these in the centre will do the job to adorn that celebration absolutely beautifully. Again, the Cymbidium is the star and as ever we're letting the flowers and the design do the talking. As if you could want any more, let's take a look at our final design of today with the spectacular Cymbidium centerpiece. In this design, we're going to be using exclusively white Cymbidium, which you know gets me incredibly excited. I love a neutral palette, and we're going to combine this with some beautiful pampas grass. How interesting, you say, I know. When it comes to our tools, we're only going to need some chicken wire, and we're going to need some stage weights, or some weights that maybe you can use from weightlifting if you have any around the house. I know, intrigued? Me too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have you take a length of chicken wire. Now, I prefer using silver chicken wire for this design, and at one side of the table, I'm just going to literally roll out a little bit of the chicken wire and place a weight over it, as you see here, holding that chicken wire in position towards the back end of the table. I'm then going to take my chicken wire and twist it as I go. You're thinking, what is this gentleman doing? How interesting, how bizarre. What I'm doing is I'm twisting the chicken wire across the diameter of the table, across the space in which I want to design my composition. Now, I'm twisting the chicken wire as we go automatically creates a tube. It creates a, a gorgeous little cylindrical space into which I'll be able to add my floral materials. Once I reach the other side of the table, I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to unspool the chicken wire, as you can see here, take a second weight and place it atop the chicken wire just holding it firmly in position exactly as you see here. Now this is important, we need weights on either side of the table securing the chicken wire in position. Now this is especially important because the medium are quite heavy flowers so we need to make sure we have the right mechanics in place to really respect those materials when we use them. Now to secure these weights in position what I want you to do is take a simple cable tie and just pop that through the little connection that you've made in the chicken wire. I'm I'm going to do this on either end of the table. So we have two cable ties in this, which just firmly, they help keep the weights in position. We have one towards the rear of the table, just coming into view on the left, and we have one at the front of the table as well. If that's all we're doing, well, you might want to fast forward. That's right, on this design, we are going large, and I want you to take your chicken wire 
down to the floor. We're creating a Cymbidium Cascade. I mean, I know. Does it get any better? I don't think so. We're repeating the same technique. We're going to take our chicken wire and we're going to literally twist it as we go, creating a little cylinder of chicken wire into which we'll be able to place all of our stems. Once we get to the floor, I want you to secure it in position using another stage weight and then trim off the excess chicken wire, which will no longer be needed. Fold back a little of the chicken wire and secure in position again with a cable tie, mimicking exactly what we did atop the table. Here we can see the full mechanics that we have in place. One length of chicken wire going across the table and down to the floor. Just you wait and see what we do next. Our next step involves, you guessed it, pampas grass and how fresh and gorgeous is this pampas grass. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to use this. Now, we're going to use this pampas grass by trimming it a little short. We only need a length on there, but around about six inches or so, and we're going to use this to base our design. Now, the pampas grass will last beautifully out of water for the duration of event. Eight to 12 hours, no problem at all. So I'm going to repeat the process time and time again, taking each stem of pampas, trimming it short, removing any leaves or any side shoots from it and then I'm going to cascade the pampas grass over the table and down towards the floor. Now the pampas grass will hold in the chicken wire really simply. All you need to do is insert it in and through the chicken wire and you'll find it will naturally hold or naturally grab onto the chicken wire securing itself in position. I mean doesn't this look absolutely fabulous. Look at this gorgeous texture. Now for our very first step what I want you to do is create a first layer using the pampas grass. This will enable you to make sure that you have everything in position that you need to have in there. It gives you an idea over the form and this shape that you're going to create. Then I want you to add in a little more pampas grass and then you'll have your finished form. So think of the pampas grass as if it's our foliage that we're using within this particular centerpiece. Now, in our spectacular centerpiece, we're going to be using two varieties of beautiful white cymbidium. And the great thing about cymbidium, of course, is that they can be used as waterless flowers. It makes them perfect for use at parties and celebrations. I'm going to trim off the excess stem that we don't quite need, and then I'm literally going to place the stem of cymbidium through the chicken wire, through the pampas grass. Now this is really um, a magical thing because as you know, waterless flowers save time, they save money when we're creating installations and creating centerpieces for weddings or events. If you have to make this centerpiece last a little bit longer, maybe it's for a display or it's for a multi-day event, then of course, just use test tubes that the, te that the cymbidium come in, keep them on the ends and then tuck those through, giving the cymbidium a water source. My gosh, here we have our finished spectacular centerpiece, a gorgeous cymbidium cascade, perfect for any celebration or indeed wedding. We have two varieties of white cymbidium, which combine gorgeously with the soft, natural base tone of the pampas bringing everything together. This classic and yet at the same time contemporary centerpiece sweeps across the top of the table and then of course pulls downwards towards the floor creating the most magical of centerpieces for everybody to enjoy. I don't know about you but this centerpiece is truly a show stopper and I can't wait to see how you take the inspiration from this design and recreate it yourself putting your own stamp on some of the techniques that we've shared together today. And that concludes our three Cymbidium centerpieces, the simplest Cymbidium centerpiece, the stylish Cymbidium centerpiece, and of course, the spectacular Cymbidium centerpiece. I hope you thoroughly have enjoyed our time together today. If you have any questions whatsoever, you know where to find me. Drop them below and my team and I will get back to you as soon as we possibly can. And of course, we cannot wait to see your own Cymbidium centerpieces, what you come up with based upon the ideas and time that we have shared together today. I truly hope you have enjoyed our time together within this tutorial and I cannot wait to see what you create in the future. Thanks so much for joining us today. Have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial really soon. Until then, take care.